Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are looking at C++ arrays. So arrays are just structures to store a sequence of values. You can think of them just as a list of values. And in these lists, we can, we can define the, the list type, basically. Uh, and so we could have a list of integers, or we could have a list of doubles, or a list of strings, that sort of thing. This might be useful if you wanted to make a list of maybe the names of people in a class, or maybe like the grades that those people got for that class, that sort of thing. One of the limitations of an array is that its size must be constant when the program is compiled. So that just means that um, basically you can't, you can't have the array changing in size. So if we have an array that we define to have 10 values in it, it will always have 10 values. Some of those, you know, we could fill with zeros or something, but there's no situation where that array, we could physically remove maybe the last value, and now the array can only hold nine, or same thing, we can't add another value at the end to have an array of now 11. We could be doing that with vectors, but that's not, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that in a few videos. So right now we're just looking at arrays. All right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and define our first array. And you'll see that it's actually not too bad. So let's pick a type, let's call uh, double. And then what we do is we give it, uh, we give our, our array a name. So we'll have, let's call our array values. Now what we can do is we can specify the number of values that are going to be in our array. So for now, let's say we're going to make an array with five values that are all going to be of double type. Right now we could just finish it like that and we will have successfully defined our array and then we can go in and add the elements. Or what we can do is we can just initialize it right now with a curly brace and we can put in some values. So let's fill in uh, some values here. Let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. All right, so there we go. We have initialized our five values that are going to appear in our array. Um, now the thing we should talk about is when we when we want to come do things like print these to the screen uh, We will call their index number and in C++ the first elements index number is zero Then the second elements index number is one then two then three then four So when we call the, the basically the zeroth element, that's basically calling the first and when we call this no, You'll see it. Well, you'll see down here. I'll just do it. So let's go see out and then we just just call whichever one we want. So we have values, and let's pick values zero. So that's the, the value with index number zero, so that should be 10. And then we'll go end line, and let's see what happens when we save this, and we'll run the program. All right, so there we go. Once we run it, it prints out a 10 to the screen. So it's going in, finding the index value of zero, it's displaying a 10, prints out a 10 to the screen. If we change this to index value of number one, so again, that's index value zero, then one. So when we print this to the screen, we should expect it to be a 20, just like that. All right, so we can go through, but I'll skip a couple. Let's say, let's print values four, which is actually the fifth element in our array of five. And there you go, it's printing the last and fifth element, which is 50. Now what happens if we actually go values five and try and print that? Well, we know that if we start on zero, and we counted, we'd be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this actually doesn't exist inside of our five, that five value kind of array. So when we try and print that, it gives us this crazy number. And that's because our array only knows these five, our array only has these five elements in it. And when we try and call the sixth element, which is this with the index number five, um, what it, that's not defined in this array and that's just this number is showing up because on my computer, uh, that little bit of memory is just that it's looking for. It's not finding it here, and it's just picking up whatever else is somewhere on my in my memory. So that's called a bounds error, and that can be really bad for your program. And it actually, it, you notice it didn't give us an error. It ran, and it just kind of sl silently just put in this number. So anyways, watch out for that because if you actually, if you're accidentally calling elements in arrays that don't exist, you won't get that error message and you'll keep running, but then you know if you're, if you're doing something important, you'll have all these crazy numbers messing up your calculations. So bounds error, don't wanna do that. Um, you should always have, when you're calling a value, kind of think if you have your array size of n, then you can't call bigger than n minus one. All right, so with that said, um, let's go back, let's call, uh, we'll print out the zero element. Um, but I want to show you that we don't actually need this 5 here. And the only reason we don't for now is because we've just specified here. We've initialized 5 values, and that's the same thing. So we can have the 5 there. We cannot. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, if we didn't have the five there, but then we didn't initialize, then that would be a problem. But the fact that we're initializing five values, that's pretty smart. It knows that we are making an array of five. All right. So what if we uh, let's what if we don't what if we kind of mess up and we forget to put in all uh, all five of our values? So we say that this array is supposed to have five. We only put in two values. What it's going to do? It will just populate the rest as zeros. So there will be spaces for us to use later, but for now it'll just call them as zeros. So again, we'll call or we'll print element zero. We get a ten, but if we try and print maybe zero one. Let's say we try and print element number two, so which actually the third element, and we save that, go and run, it's printing us a zero. So there you go. It'll just fill the whole thing with zeros, um, and then we can go back and we can fill those in later. Uh, for example, um, what we can do is we can sort of assign, if we forgot to or if we didn't even initialize in the first place, we can go values uh, and we can assign values into these spots so we could say values two and initialize or yeah not initialize assign some number let's say 30 just like that and then when we build and run then we get that 30 like we were expecting all right so that's a brief little introduction to sort of what's going on here and uh, I'll just show you again I mentioned you could do this with strings too if you wanted so let's say uh, another quick example. Um, we'll, we'll pick our element type to be string. Maybe we'll call our array something like names. Um, let's put in, let's put four names in. And let's initialize this. So we would want some names in here. We'd have like uh, Mike, um, double Sarah, and uh, there's some other names, Jake, and maybe another one, Sam. All right, and remember we have to put them in quotation marks because these are strings. So then when we come down here, we can, uh, yeah, we can just, you know, see out names. Uh, let's pick the index number three, which will be the fourth element, and end line. And we'll go build and run that and see what happens. So there you go, it's printing Sam to the screen. And if you again, if you're looking at index number three, we'd have zero, one, two, three. So there you go, there's a quick introduction to C arrays, and I will see you in the next video and we'll get deeper into it.